Okay, acid-base reactions. Um, these are reactions where uh, an H plus ion is either donated or accepted by different kinds of compounds. So acid-base reactions trade H plus around. Um, here's an example. <clears throat> HCl is an acid. So here the HCl is going to give an H plus to H2O. So HCl gives an H plus to H2O, so it becomes Cl minus, losing that H, and this becomes H3O plus, gaining an H plus. So all acid-base reactions are exactly the same. All we're doing is just taking an H plus, giving it to a base. That's what an, this is what an uh, acid-base reaction is. Acid is really H plus. So hydrogen chloride can be a gas. And when I dissolve that gas into some water, some liquid water, then the chloride and the H uh, become separated. And this H atom from the HCl gets stuck on water and makes H3O plus. So a solution that is acidic has a lot of H3O plus in it. It means it has extra H pluses. H plus gets stuck to water and it makes H3O plus. So this is an acidic solution. So strong acids, well how can we tell an acid in the first place? An acid is one that has an H in the front. Acids start with H in their formula. So um, HCl, HC2H3O2, HNO3 even H2O. So anytime there's an H at the front of a compound, then we would interpret that as being an acid. This is an acid, this is an acid, this is an acid, this is an acid, even water. So at, we can identify an acid by looking at a formula by seeing if that formula starts with H. Now some acids we call strong acids, and some acids we call weak acids. These are the six strong acids. So three of them are really easy because uh, HCl, uh, Br, and Hi are halogens. Cl, Br, and I. So these three acids, HCl, HBr, and Hi, are all strong acids. Those are called the halogen acids. So there's three other strong acids, HNO3, HClO4, and H2SO4. Uh, HBr is hydrobromic acid, HCl is hydrochloric acid, HI is hydroiodic acid. Remember when there's only two elements in an acid, then I name the H, I call it hydro something, hydro something, hydro something. But when there's more than two elements, one, two, three elements, then I don't name the H anymore. So notice that these acids down here all have more than two elements, and I don't have hydro in front of them. So this is a nitrate, NO3 is nitrate. So this becomes nitric acid. ClO4 is perchlorate. So perchlorate becomes perchloric acid. SO4 is sulfate. So sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. So there's only six strong acids. This is it, just these six. But there are literally an, nearly an infinite number of acids. There's so many possible combinations of atoms that we can call acids, which means that there are six strong acids and there are infinity minus six weak acids. So almost every acid that you encounter is weak.
There are lots and lots and lots and lots of weak acids, but there's only six strong acids. And what does a strong acid do? Well, a strong acid completely dissociates, and a weak acid does not completely dissociate. So let's see what that means. So if I have a strong acid, That means a strong acid is one where if I have, let's say, 10 molecules of HCl, 10, then when this is all, and I have 0 H and 0 Cl, then after this happens, after the forward arrow happens, then I have 0 HCl. 10 H plus and 10 Cl minus. So initially, at H Cl, 10 of those. And then after the reaction is done, after the acid has what we call dissociated, I have 10 of these and 10 of these because it's completely fallen apart. I start with 10 and I end with zero because there are none of these left because they've all fallen apart. But a weak acid like HF has a different symbol. We draw the backwards and forwards arrow called an equilibrium arrow. And if this were to break apart, it would make H plus and F minus. And in a weak acid, we might start with 10 HF and have zero of these before it falls apart. And then after this is done falling apart, maybe I have 9 HF left and 1 H plus and 1 F minus. So in a strong acid, the HCl completely falls apart and it's just H plus and Cl minus on the other side. But in a weak acid, these two pieces don't completely fall apart. In fact, almost all of them are still together. In a weak acid, I have 90% or 99% of my molecules still look like this. And only 1% of the molecules look like this. So weak acids don't fall apart all the way. And strong acids do fall apart all the way. And there's only six strong acids. So most acids are weak and they don't dissociate completely. So here's an example of a weak acid. This is acetic acid. And write the H up front so we can identify it as an acid. So when we write the H up front and we see, oh, this is an acid. And what happens is the acid gives its H to H2O and then it becomes H3O. Well, this only happens about 1%. So when this reaction is done, and I have let it sit for an hour or so, and it, all the reaction, all the reacting that was going to happen has already happened, then that means that I have 99% of this, and I have 99% of this, and 1% of this, and 1% of this. So a weak acid does not make very much H3O+, plus. only 1% H3O+. Plus. If this was a strong acid, then this would be 100%. All of the acid that I started with over here has 100% converted into H3O+, plus in a strong acid. That's the difference. Okay, a base is a substance that makes OH. So acids are H plus, bases are OH minus. So these are the most common bases. Sodium hydroxide, which is by far the most common base. Potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. Why do these have two? Well, because calcium has a two plus charge. 
and barium has a 2 plus charge. So to balance the 2 plus charge, I need two OHs, two OHs. These, sodium only has a plus one, and potassium only has a plus one. So remember, the number of ions that are in a compound has to do with the charges, so that they can balance out and equal zero. So these bases are like strong acids. If I put a strong acid in water, it completely breaks apart and makes 100% H3O+. If I put any of these bases in water, they completely break apart and make 100% OH-. So these are strong bases. Just, just like a strong acid, 100% of this goes in, and when I'm done, I have 0% of this and I have 100% of this. It's completely fallen apart. Um, and just like strong acids and weak acids, I have strong bases and weak bases. So a weak base completely falls apart and makes 100% OH minus. A weak base is just analogous to a weak acid, in which case I'll have for example, 99% ammonia, 99% water, and 1% ammonium, and 1% hydroxide. So in a weak base, I only have 1% of OH-. Most of my base is still unreacted. Most of it didn't do anything. So when we mix acids and bases together, they neutralize each other. And a neutral, neutralize means that the acid is no longer an acid and the base is no longer a base after you mix them together. They've become neutral. So the way that that works is I have, for example, in this tube right here is acid, H3O plus and Cl minus. That's a solution of HCl. And in this tube here is sodium hydroxide, a solution where the Na and the OH- are separated from each other, soluble. So when I mix these two solutions together down here in the beaker, what happens is this is H3O+, and H3O+, and OH- run into each other. And when H3O+, and OH- run into each other, what do you think happens? Well, this one is missing H. It's OH1. This has one too many H's. It's H3O. So when H3O and H1O run into each other, they make H2O. So this is an acid. It's like water with too many H's. This is a base. It's like water with too few, with too few H's. So when an acid with too many and a base with too few run into each other, then they can equal out, they can neutralize, and they can make water. So after H3O plus and OH minus run into each other, then I have water, and sodium is left, and chloride is left. So base plus acid, and I know that this is an acid because it has an H in the front, and what happens with an acid and a base? Well, they make water and they make salt, some kind of salt. In this case, table salt, sodium chloride, because I had sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. So sodium and chloride were my spectator ions.